management or IM solutions and services. I am based in Calgary, Canada, and uh, we have offices across Canada and presence in the US and Asia Pacific. And we help all sorts of organizations, public and private, uh, help them realize the benefits of a true IM solution. And we do partner with various IAM technology companies to help deliver IAM solutions to our customers. With me today is uh, Derek Nidar. And uh, Derek, you care to say hi and say a few words? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Derek, security strat strategist here in IAM team. I am currently based in Toronto and I specialize in identity governance and uh, privilege management. Got it. Thanks, thanks, Derek. Uh, so I'll be your guide for today in this webinar. And actually, Derek has the fun task of showing you how uh, a real PAM solution actually works. So let's move on to our agenda. Today, we'll walk you through the common use cases for privilege access to demonstrate how a real PAM solution works and how it could actually help enhance your current IAM program or security operations. So we'll start with the capability to discover, discover privilege accounts, then move on to how to control elevated permissions. Uh, managing temporary privileges is a common use cases that we've seen in a lot of our customers. Um, and finally, show you some of the auditing capabilities and detection capabilities of, a, of an actual uh, uh, IAM uh, privilege access management solution. So at IAM team, we've, we've built partnerships with various enterprise-grade technology providers. IBM is our major technology partner. And so for this webinar, we will showcase the capabilities of IBM Security Verify Privilege Vault, uh, formerly known as IBM Security Secret Server. Uh, well, IBM Security Verify Privilege Vault makes it easy to identify and secure all service, application, administrator and root accounts across your enterprise. Uh, through continuous discovery, you'll be able to curb privilege accounts sprawl and gain a full view of privilege access in your organization. It is really easy to use and uh, we've implemented a number of IBM security solutions to a number of organizations in Canada and the US. And we do believe that IBM security verify privilege vault has the features and capabilities to satisfy an enterprise organization's requirements on privilege access. And that's the primary reason why we chose uh, IBM to partner in this, in this particular webinar. Okay. So having said that, um, let's move on to uh, what's the current situation right now and, and why is privilege account, what, what is privilege account and, and uh, what's the problem with privilege accounts? So business relies on IT resources network, on-premise servers, cloud-based servers, and applications, uh, internal web applications, databases, and directors. These are pretty much everything that a typical IT would have, these IT resources. And to manage these resources, you need privilege accounts. And these accounts such as administrator, root, there's a very, here's a very small list of what we've seen in most organizations have uh, on privilege accounts. And as a system administrator, for example, we'll use these accounts to access the backend servers and systems. And it would be highly unusual to have only one administrator in any organization. So another, org another administrator may need access to resources using the same credentials. And as the company grows, you'll need more admins using the same powerful credentials to access backend systems. And don't forget our DBAs. DBAs need access to, their da to those databases and they need privilege access, privilege accounts as well to access those systems. So the challenge is quite obvious. Uh, first of all, there is no accountability. Who's actually doing what at a given time? Uh, that would very, be very hard to track in this kind of setup. User IDs are shared by multiple individuals. And if there is an incident or investigation, it will be impossible to say the least to determine who did what. There's credential sharing. Credentials are passed around. I've been to many IAM implementations and I'm no longer surprised if I see passwords or root 
administrator accounts on Excel spreadsheets and passed around by email or stored in the shared drive. That, that is basically just bad practice. And as your resources grow in number, so does the number of privileged accounts to manage. One of our customers who ran a uh, cloud-based server business started with a couple of hundred servers. And now they have close to 10,000 Linux and Windows servers. Now each server would have at least one privileged account. So you can imagine the sheer number of privileged accounts to manage in this type of environment. The more privileged accounts you, to the more privileged accounts you have, the higher your risk. And it does take only one compromised privilege credential to take down the business. Cyber attackers will always aim for privileged credentials because these accounts will give them unlimited and powerful access to your assets with abilities to, to traverse from one server to another and hide their tracks. So it is definitely hotly a, a, a love-hate relationship. On the one hand, privileged accounts are necessary to run your IT operations to support the business. You just can't do without them. They are, they are there and you have to use them. On the other hand, privileged accounts are high impact vulnerabilities because they are powerful entry points to your most valuable asset and that's your data. Most of the time, knowing how many privileged accounts you have in your environment is already a challenge. So, so maybe we can take a, a quick poll here. Um, how many privileged accounts do you have in your IT environment? So if you can just you know, estimate, quickly answer that. Um, the... Cause that is half of the battle is really identifying. And that what we've seen in most organization is sometimes it, you know, you ask that question and they, it's a blank stare. Uh, I don't know how many accounts I have. All right, so I think everybody see the results. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't know. And that, that is already the challenge. Not knowing what you have is, is already the challenge. And the threat is real. And you just look at the news, what's happening today. Uh, the threat is real and the impact can be very costly for any organization. Now, according to Forrester, 80% of security breaches involve privileged, privileged credentials. That's a big number. And these are people that are already in your IT environment. These are already, they could, this could be um, an employee, uh, a contractor, or anyone who's already in your environment um, using privileged accounts. Um, and it constitutes about 80% of those breaches. Uh, in the recent Poneman Institute cost of data breach report, breaches can be categorized under three root causes, malicious attack, system glitch, and human error. So you can imagine the impact if a system glitch or human error involved the use of a privileged account the impact can be uh, definitely catastrophic. Um, highly regulated business sectors, such as healthcare, energy, and financial, and again, based from that report, experience significantly higher than usual average total cost of breach, primarily because breaches in these sectors result to significant business losses, such as loss of customers, loss in company trust, uh, costs identified here include cost of activities to detect the breach, cost due to business loss, cost of activities to notify affected parties, and of course, the cost to help the victims, the victims of breach. Now, another interesting fact is the average time to detect a breach is 280 days. Why that long? Uh, it's a long time to, to identify a breach. Uh, well, one reason for this is that if the breach involved privilege access, well, privi privilege accounts are powerful enough to hide their tracks so they can lurk in your environment without you even knowing it. So question is, how can we mitigate the risk? How can we solve the problem? So ultimately, you'd like to have the ability to control the distribution and usage of privilege accounts. 
you'll need first and foremost, a credential vault to securely store credentials. So all these IDs that are being shared today, we need to put them all together, put them in the vault. And that's the reason why it's important to know what you currently have today, what privilege accounts you have currently today. But a credential vault is not enough. To build a true privilege access management solution, you need key components in this, uh, in this uh, solution. Um, you need a secure interface where administrators can go and to request and access privilege credentials. You need to have the ability to discover privilege accounts, uh, scan the environment and present accounts on servers, applications and directories. You need to have the ability to manage approvals, password rotation cycles through process workflows. And you should have uh, access controls to assign least privilege to administrators, the ability to create policies and assign permissions depending on roles so that administrators only have access to resources they have valid business need to use. And of course, most importantly, and auditors love this, audit reports and the ability to record sessions, giving you that audit intelligence on who did what, when, and where, and be able to play back the session for further proof. So these are just the common components of a privileged access management or PAM solution. And once that's established, the PAM solution becomes central in your IAM program or security operations, uh, enabling you to control the use and distribution of privilege accounts. So let's take another poll. Let's pause and take another poll. Um, do, do you have a PAM solution? Now that we know what a PAM solution is, um, would be interesting now to know if you have a PAM solution in place today. So if you can just provide your feedback on that poll, let's see what the response from the audience. All right, wow. So pretty much none and some don't know. Okay, um, and that's why we're here to learn more about what a PAM solution would be able to do and provide. Um, and so let's, let's go down to the meat of what we're gonna demonstrate for today. Uh, we prepared a very basic demo environment. Um, again, as we mentioned earlier, we're going to central to this demo is IBM Security Verify Privilege Vault. Um, in the demo, you'll be introduced to various actors, a privilege user, a request approver, and an auditor, all using IBM Security Verify Privilege Vault to check out, check in passwords, change passwords, request for passwords, do account discovery. And our target systems would be Active Directory, Windows, and Linux, the common operating systems you would have in an environment today. Uh, the first scenario we're gonna go through um, is uh, the basic discovery. This is essentially the, the really the first step. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, we need to ensure that the PAM solution you're going to you're going to have or you're going to select for it would have this capability, the ability to discover privilege accounts. Just imagine if you get thousands of servers out there, uh, manually going through each one would definitely be a pain. Um, so with this one, we'd be able to discover and scan. Um, in our demo, we're going to show you how to scan an Active Directory uh, resource. And then as this discovery and scan is uh, implemented, it will bring back the accounts. Okay. So having said that, I will uh, turn this over to Derek, who will uh, show us the, um, uh, the demo. Uh, thanks, Armand. So now I am logged in as the admin in Privilege Vault. So for this scenario, let's head over to the screen discovery. So here in discovery, you can set up a discovery source to scan. Uh, there are several uh, discovery sources available out of the box in Privilege Vault. So you can see here we can set up Active Directory, Unix, VMware, Amazon Web Services, and even Google Cloud Platform. 
but in our instance, in this scenario, we'll be setting up an AD source. So let's look up our cur currently our AD source. So currently, um, there are no computers or accounts discovered. So if you see here under domain accounts, service accounts, and local accounts, currently there are not, nothing, uh, no results found. So let's set this up. Let's configure this uh, um, Active Directory source. So I just need to set this up uh, and apply the appropriate credentials. Let me just uh, set this up over here. Um, and uh, actually, what's good with the uh, with Privilege Vault is that um, Privilege Privilege Vault has set up wizards for the different types of uh, sources that uh, makes it a breeze in terms of configuring. So I just have to put type in the different credentials. Then, so after configuring the discovery source, we can then run discovery. Now the scan will take a few minutes to run, but uh, again, uh, as uh, Armand mentioned earlier, uh, basically the first step in really managing privileged, privileged accounts is to get a hold of all the privileged accounts in your system. That's half of the battle. So that's why discovery is essential uh, as we are able to see all of these accounts, even the ones we didn't know exist. So let's head over to discovery. So instantly we see the different accounts available um, in the uh, our AD source. So under the domain account, we, we see the different domain accounts under the Gaulu domain, our domain, uh, under service accounts, we see the uh, discovered services, uh, service accounts. And under local accounts, here we see the list of local accounts. Um, we see that uh, Privilege Vault discovered four accounts for client 01 over here. So we have admin, administrator, Elstyer, and Michael Smith. Uh, we can also see which accounts have administrator privileges. So on this column, has admin rights. We see that for client 01, we have admin, administrator, and Elstyre. They all have the administrator privilege, while only one, Michael Smith, doesn't have it. So we can also see the same thing for client 02 accounts. So from here on, we can select this account uh, and import them and then manage them and we can do it manually or via rules. So in this scenario, we see how the discovery feature allows you to see the different accounts in your system, even the ones you didn't know existed. And that's our discovery scenario. Armand, back to you. Hey, thanks, Eric. All right, so I think that's a very good very good scenario there to show that it's the Derek showed you just how easy it is to to discover uh, one one server. Uh, very valuable as as we mentioned, it's uh, half the battle uh, finding out what those accounts are. Okay, so moving on to the second scenario, uh, this is a very common scenario. Once you have a, a PAM solution already in place, uh, how do you actually use it, and what's the value of it? Um, and one of the most common challenges that we've seen is that uh, we've heard from customers, uh, organizations implementing PAM uh, solution is uh, why would I even use it? If I'm an administrator, uh, what's the value? Uh, I think it will just slow down my, my operations. It will be a burden for me to, to use this, this. That's the common uh, challenge that we've seen for when we implement uh, uh, a PAM solution. But on the contrary, it, it's not really a burden. In fact, and Derek is going to show you that the PAM solution, if, if implemented properly and the right technology, it does actually make things a lot easier for administrators and actually protects them uh, from 
from accountability issues like uh, if something happened to a server, then we can always go back and determine who actually used that particular privilege account at a given time. And so accountability will be uh, enforced in this kind of scenario. And in this demo, uh, and uh, Derek's gonna use uh, Andrew Marks, he's our privilege user. He's gonna use uh, IBM Security Verify Privilege Vault to check out a privilege ID and once he checked that out, he will be able to access Active Directory uh, domain controller, uh, sorry, an Active Directory session. And uh, once he check it back in and he's done with it, the password will automatically be changed. And therefore you have a um, secure way of ensuring that passwords are rotated every time it is used. Okay, so Derek, uh, uh, you can go ahead and share your screen. Thank you, Arman. Okay, so I'm trying, I, I will be logging on as Andrew Marks. So let's uh, start with the login. So as you can see, Privilege Vault requires me to authenticate via a one-time password. On the right side, you see my phone. I'm using IBM Security Verify mobile app. Let's type in the code for Andrew. Okay, MFA can be via email, OTP, or biometrics. And we, of course, we know this is a best practice considering Privilege Vault contains very powerful accounts. So after logging in, let me just maximize this. After logging in, uh, you will immediately see the credentials available for Andrew. So depending on how the configuration is and what the credentials are, it, uh, accessing it may require approval or may just require a simple checkout. In our scenario, uh, let's say uh, Andrew needs to uh, access the client 01 machine. So let's check out the client 01 admin credential. So with this, uh, let's just uh, click on checkout. So just with that one click of the checkout button, we now have access to the credential. So from, from here, Andrew can now use the credential. Uh, let's say he wants to look at it. He can uh, copy it or launch an RDP session from Privilege Vault. So with the, the RDP launcher, with just one click, I don't even have to show and copy any password. So I will be automatically uh, remotely connected. So it's now checking the connection. So let me just set this up. So I'm uh, logging in as the administrator. Okay, so now I'm logged in as, so you can see here, as the administrator for machine client 01. Okay, um, okay, but let's say, uh, what if another user wanted to use the credential? Let's say uh, George Wilde, a contractor, also wants to use the same credential. So let me just switch to another browser here. So let's uh, log in as George. Okay, similar to Andrew, I need to authenticate. So, okay, so now I'm logged in as George. Um, so at a glance, you will see uh, the credentials available for, for George. But aside from that, on this column, we will immediately see which uh, credentials are currently checked out. So for the instance, for this instance, client 01 admin is currently checked out and we know that Andrew is the one using it. But uh, let's say despite this, George still tried to access the credential. So let's click on the credential. And here, since it's checked out, we know who is currently accessing it and the latest time until George can use the credential. Okay. 
but uh, okay, so let's get, get back to Andrew's session. So let's say Andrew here is, uh, is just leaving a document. Okay, so he left the document. Uh, he's finished with what he is doing. So he is now signing out from the machine as admin. Okay, let's get back to Andrew. So this is Andrew's uh, Privilege Vault account. Uh, as uh, we have mentioned earlier, Privilege Vault uh, allows for automatic password changing upon check-in. Let's see this in action. So we see here the cur current password for client 01 admin. So I'm copying it and saving it in our notepad. Uh, and then after that, let's check in the password. So now I've checked in the password. Um, let's try to use that copied password to access the server through a separate RDP session. So I'm opening my RDP here. So it's for client 01 for the user administrator. So I will try to connect. I will type in this password. And from here, we see that uh, we were not able to log in using the old password we got prior to checking the password in. Now, let's see why. Um, let's try to check the password again. And then let's show the password. So as you can see here, I'm copying it now. And we're comparing this with the old password that we got. So when we earlier, when we checked in the, the credential, uh, Privilege Vault uh, changed the password remotely. So this is extremely helpful in avoiding pass the hash attacks. So in this scenario, um, we were able to see that credentials can only be accessed by one user at a given time, ensuring a proper trail for audits. And upon check-in, passwords are automatically changed, ensuring that previous users won't be able to um, log back using old passwords that they might have earlier copied or used. So this is an effective control against pass the hash attacks as it uh, invalidates passwords after use, even without actually rebooting the box. So attackers won't be able to get a hold of the passwords at all. Uh, yeah, and then th that's it for our second scenario. Back to you, Armand. All right, thanks, Eric. Just share back my screen here. So yeah, a good point there. So a couple of points I forgot to mention. The MFA capability is highly important. Remember, you're an admin trying to access a privileged access management service. And so if we are protecting regular users uh, and putting MFA on their login, then we better make sure that we also apply MFA to you, to administrators trying to access a very sensitive uh, system, such as a privileged access management service. Uh, and also the patch the hash attack, it's a common attack vector on Windows and uh, with the ability to reset the password every time it's used, uh, reduces, uh, if not eliminates the, that, that vulnerability. All right, so moving on to the third scenario, another common scenario that you've seen from our, our customers, uh, the ability to provide temporary privileges. So let's say you have a vendor who needs temporary access to a server and they only need it for a certain period of time and uh, they need to install something on, on your servers and you definitely don't want to give them permanent access but only uh, a access within a, a certain period. So uh, in this case, we have uh, George Wild as the vendor logging into uh, the spam solution. He will request for a password and approval will go to Helen Case, the manager. And then once that approved, he will be able to log in to the backend system. In this, in this case, we're gonna use Linux uh, as the target system. Okay, back to you, Derek. Okay, thank you, Armand. Let me just share my screen here. Okay, so let's look at George Wilde's account. Now, um, now he's trying to uh, access the client root, uh, sorry, um, the Lin Linux machine. So he's trying to access the client root credential over here. 
<clears throat> okay, so when uh, he clicks on the credential, he sees that he needs to get an approval from his manager. So for this, let's select request access. Now from here, uh, George needs to select the num uh, amount of time that he would be using the credential. So let's say 30 minutes, the start and end date, and the reason. So let's say need to leave a document, let's say, and then submit request. Now upon submission, the manager will be notified. So let's check on um, uh, Helen's inbox. So I'm going to go into the email of Helen. Oh. Okay, so here we see a recent email. So this is coming from uh, Privilege Vault informing Helen that the, there's a request to access this uh, credential coming from George Wilde. Now, uh, there are links here for uh, Helen to click on uh, to approve or deny the request. But uh, so let's log in as Helen here. And let's try to approve the request. Uh, and then, of course, similar to uh, Andrew and George, Helen needs to type in and, uh, the pin and authenticate. So, okay, so let's maximize that. Now, let's go to the home page. Here we can see the request on the right side. You see here um, the requester, the secret that the, the requester needs access to in the time frame. So, for this scenario, let's uh, approve the request. So I'm clicking approve, but let's just say approve, then confirm approve. So since Helen approved the request, George will be notified uh, through email that his request has been approved. So let's go back to the emails here. So under George Wilde over here, you see there's a recent email. Uh, it's uh, an email informing George that Helen Case approved the request. So same, uh, there's a link to go to the secret. Uh, let's just head back to George, George's account over here. Now, since his request was approved, uh, he'll be able to uh, gain access to the client root credential. So let's try that out. So earlier when we clicked this, uh, we needed to send a, a request now, since it's already approved, we can just click on checkout. Then we'll have access to the to the credential. So similar to what Andrew can do earlier, can uh, show the password, copy it, or uh, launch a party straight from Privilege Vault. So same as earlier, there's no need to copy the password, look into it, just one click and boom. He is now logged in as root into the client zero tree machine. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, George is finishing up something. Say he is typing. Uh, the world. Uh, okay, he's just leaving out a document here. The world. Okay, so that's it. He's done. Let's sign out of machine here. Okay, with that, we see that we can create workflows such that certain credentials require approval before they can be used. Uh, and that's it for our third scenario. Passing it back to you, Armand. Okay, thanks, Eric. All right, so we're down to the last scenario, uh, which is really, to me, uh, very vital, especially for audit. Uh, figuring out who did what and uh, the ability to run reports. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna have uh, Jeannie Gillen as the auditor and he and should be able to view tons of, uh, well, there's tons of reports under uh, IBM Security Verify Privilege Vault, uh, but we're gonna be uh, honing down to a few. 
And you also be able to view the ability to, to play back session recording. So I always call it uh, PVR on steroids. Uh, you'd see uh, the activities that were done and recorded previously. Okay, Derek, go for it. Thank you, Armand. Uh, let me just share my screen over here. Okay, so let's log in as Ginny. So I'm typing her credentials here. Let's log in. Uh, again, so similar to the past three users, we have to authenticate. Oh, three. Okay, so now we're logged in as Ginny. Um, so what can Genie do? Genie can uh, check out reports to see what the users are doing with the secret. So when I check out the report section here, uh, we see here uh, there are a few out of the box reports available. Uh, let's focus on one of these reports. Let's check out secret activity report. So here uh, in this report, we can see the, the date uh, and time when a certain user, so this is the user column, checked out or accessed or did something to certain secrets. So, uh, and then these are the actions taken by that user. Uh, let's uh, review uh, the previous scenario. So we see here when uh, George Wild requested access for client root. And then Helen approved the request. And then George checked out the secret. He viewed the secret. He also displayed the password and then launched Potty. Okay. And then uh, after, after using it, uh, George Wald check, checked it in. Then we see here the system, psychotic system recorded the session. So all, all of those are within this report. And then aside from this, we can also audit what secrets a user access at certain dates through the user audit. So when we go to user audit, so here it's, it's a much simpler report. You can just select which user from certain, uh, from what date until what date, if you want to include uh, specific folders where the secrets are contained, and then you can just click search history. So in this case, let's uh, take George Wild as an example here. Here we can see what George uh, Wild accessed uh, during the this uh, specified dates. Now, um, this is very helpful, helpful, especially to IT managers, as it will keep auditors off their backs, as they have you know, visi visibility and control of who ever uses what privileged credentials at uh, what, what time, basically. Okay, so um, let's say Jeannie isn't satisfied. She wants to further investigate what, what George did and what Andrew did during their sessions. So she wants to see the actual session recording. Now, so let's head over to the session monitoring uh, section here. So you can see in this uh, section, we see all of the recordings when uh, the user used specific uh, credentials. Uh, so for example, here for client root, we have a recording when George Wild used it. We have here a recording when uh, Andrew Marks accessed client 01 admin earlier. Uh, so, okay, for example, let's go to the recording for Andrew Marks. So here, uh, the genie can play the recording. So she can skip to specific sections of the recording. So as you can see here, when uh, we're, when Andrew was uh, still logging in, see here when he uh, checked out certain stuff, uh, and then uh, the portion when he left a hello world text message. So that's all recorded here. Uh, aside from that, uh, she can also download the recording. 
for let's say if uh, if the if she wants to share it or she wants to review it off, offline she can download it and do uh, uh, share it or uh, review it and that's uh, that's also the same for let's say George Wild here so when he logged into client 0103 uh, as root and then when uh, he was uh, leaving the hello world text so that's all recorded here. Okay, so in this scenario, we see the out of the box reports uh, and see that we can uh, review uh, recorded sessions that use the privilege credentials. Okay, and that's the end of our privilege vault demonstration. Back to you, Armand. Great, thanks, Eric. Yeah, so that list of reports there, I think there's probably a hundred of reports there. Those are out of the box reports. They are uh, available as soon as you get um, IBM Security Verified Privilege Vault. All right, so we've reached our end of the scenarios. And uh, one thing that we'd like to mention as well is that um, we, we try to, you know, Implementing a PAM solution sometimes uh, becomes very complicated and, and, uh, and all the, the IBM Security Verified Privilege Vault is really easy to implement. Uh, we've uh, announced a few service offerings that uh, you can take advantage of if you're interested in looking more into how a PAM solution can work in your environment. Um, we are, uh, we've announced a PAM quick start and what it is is it's, your, it's the ability to use PAM solution using IBM Security uh, Verify Privilege Vault at zero cost. It's not your typical, it's not just getting the, the, the licensing for trial. It's actually in, uh, included with this are services from, from us to help you get started. Uh, you'll get the trial license from IBM uh, for 30 days. That's publicly available on their website and we can help you get that set up for in your environment. And it includes professional services uh, for discovery of privilege accounts, um, setting up secure vault, um, uh, check how to do checkout check-in and integration with standard systems such as Active Directory. And of course it comes with the built-in standard reports uh, because most of the people we talk to, uh, you know, sometimes trying to get the license, the the demo license is easy for sure, but knowing what to do with it becomes the challenge. And that's where we are. We, we're here to help. If you are interested, do let us know. You can contact us from our website or from uh, sending an email to info at imteam.com. All right. So just to summarize what we've done for today uh, in this webinar, uh, we've shown you how to discover privilege accounts. We've shown you how uh, to check out, check in accounts using elevated permissions and how to control those elevated, elevated permissions, uh, how to manage temporary privileges like a vendor needing uh, temporary access to, uh, to a server. And then finally, we also demonstrated this, uh, or showed you some of the out of the box reports focused on uh, a couple of them and, uh, and also the, the recording capabilities of uh, IBM Security uh, Privilege Vault. All right, so on that note, uh, we can open up the, the chat for Q&A. So as mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, feel free to send that question in in the uh, chat and uh, we will answer it to the best of our capability. Um, so I'll turn it over to you, Jad. Is there any questions that have pop up? Great, thank you, Armin. Yes, so we do have one question here. Can you integrate any ticketing system with privilege fault? Yeah, I'll I'll take that question. So, yes, uh, actually, you can integrate uh, ticketing systems uh, with privilege vault. Um, there are a, a variety of ticketing system that you can integrate it with. Um, out of the box, uh, you can integrate to BMC Remedy and uh, ServiceNow. Um, and then if you have, say, custom PowerShell-based system, uh, ticketing system, for example, you can also integrate that. Great. 
Great, thank you. The other question is, does Privilege Vault store only accounts and passwords? Okay, I'll take that as well. Um, uh, does Privilege Vault store only accounts? Uh, no, no. So it can uh, store different kinds of secrets. Um, uh, as we showed uh, in our demonstration, you can vault AD credentials, uh, Linux uh, accounts. Uh, you can also vault Windows accounts, SQL Server accounts. There are a lot of different accounts. But on top of that, you can also um, uh, store Office 365 or other web accounts and passwords, even uh, credit card details, even bank accounts, um, name of contacts, uh, healthcare details, product licenses, uh, license keys. So there are a lot of secrets you can store using Privilege Vault not just simple accounts and passwords. Great, thank you, Derek. So I have another one here. I noticed during the demo that you have only one approver. In our organization, we require different level of approvals to use certain passwords. Can that be done in Privilege Vault? Um, yes, yes. Uh, so you can change who the pro uh, the approver is actually, and uh, uh, through the workflows uh, in Secret Server, you can change the number of, of approval levels. Um, so if, for example, you have certain credentials that only needs one uh, approver, or which maybe is your manager, then you can set that up. But if you have credentials that, let's say, should be approved up to the director level, just as an example that requires maybe three levels of, of approval, we can also set that up. So through the uh, Privilege Vault workflows. Great, thank you, Derek. All right. Uh, any any anything else, Jack? Any other questions that came up? I think that's all the uh, questions right now. Okay. Thank you. All right. So. Again, thank you very much uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, we actually plan to run more of this, uh, maybe do a part two or a, a series on privilege access management because we've only touched the surface of what privilege access management can do. There are other features that we'd like to, to run and uh, show for uh, as, as features for privilege access management. Thank you again and have a good rest of the day.